So Skirmish Season 6 is a wrap, and today I'm joined once again by Nathan Dolman of Savage Lands Network for a recap, his observation and thoughts, and then some of our hot takes headed into next weekend. A huge shout out to our channel members for supporting what we do here. If you want to get involved with the channel and the Dice Commando community, please consider joining as a channel member. Remember, these videos are only possible with your support. You can show that support with a like, a subscribe, and by leaving us a comment and sharing your feedback. Community first, and go Commando! Hey there, Flesh and Blood folks. Welcome back. And Nathan, welcome back to you as well. How are you doing, my friend? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. You bet. You bet. Wanted to check in after skirmish season. So technically, we, we are shooting this on Sunday night. So yeah. technically, it's done, kind of. Yeah. Probably yeah. most places in the world because we're on the west coast of the U.S. So yeah, let's let's chat. I'm curious about your experience. How many did you make it to this this round? I only went to two. Okay. And it, I mean, I'm mostly preparing for Pro Tour and I've been really busy. So I just went to two. Um, you know, I had a great time, obviously, brought Ryan Arn. Uh, but yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't focus too much on skirmish season this year, right? I, okay. I was really trying to figure out CC after the new set came out. So, okay, fair enough. And yes, I, I think everyone expected you to be on. Reinar because of yeah. what you do over there at Savage Land. So for those who are not aware of you, why don't you tell them who you are and what you do? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm Savage Land's news on YouTube. And now I'm, I'm on all of the social networks now, I guess. That's we new did for it. me. <laughs> yeah, I went from being on literally zero to all of them in the course of like a couple months. But yeah, uh, I'm a Reinar player. Uh, I'm currently fighting for number one Reinar in the world, I think. Maybe I am now. And uh, probably going to lose this title after Pro Tour, but <laughs> I'm going to do my best, right? I'm a Reinar loyalist, I guess. Yeah. Fair enough. So, and actually, I have a funny story. So I, I reached out to him to kind of have this chat. I thought it'd be good to check in. And I was like, hey, have you seen this Medax Reinar build that's flying around the Talishars? And he was like, yes, indeed, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's my video, I think. Yeah, it's my, it's <laughs> my deck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I borrowed that. So I saw a Medax list in the Discord from a guy named Sean. I've had him on my channel before. Super cool Reinar player. Um, but I just kind of like mixed his list with my list and made it much more aggressive and kind of in your face and then published it. And I'm seeing it all over the place now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... The Talishars obviously is, you know, testing ground and you never know what you're going to run into. But um, yeah. th that deck actually works pretty well. Anyway, I was impressed and I was like, hey, have you seen this? And he's like, yes, I, I've, yeah. I've indeed I seen it. I genuinely think it has legs. I think it's like competitive. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, it's, I, I mean, opening with two barragings into a meat axe is, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just another way to cheat and damage. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's get into this. I mean, you, you know, the, the spoiler alert, which isn't a spoiler to anyone, was that you brought Reinar. So um, how did how did your tournaments go, and how did you feel about it overall? Yeah, I, I mean, I top-aided both of them. Um, and to be honest, like, I probably could have won them. I just was kind of in the f more having fun category than the, than the trying to be competitive category, I think. So my first my first top eight, I instantly paired against a friend slash teammate of mine, Justin. And instead of playing the list with Medex like I was supposed to into Azuri, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I one shot him on turn one? So I went for it and it, it fizzled out and then I kind of slowly lost that matchup. So I think I, I probably could have won that one if I played right. And then the second one, I actually paired into a Reinar Mir of a guy who was running my list and he one shot me basically. <laughs> so... You know, I didn't really get, uh, I had blood rush in my hand the whole thing. Like, it was basically he one shot me or I was going to one shot mm -hmm. him. So, you know, can't, it's blitz, right? You can't, sometimes you just take 20 damage in two turns, right? There's not much you can do about it in that format right now, I don't think. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I lost to a KO today who hit me for, or swung for 24. So, I mean, what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's like three characters that can one shot you. So, yeah. it's it's a little bit of a wild format right now. And then, so you, you, that was Justin Salmon? Yeah, Justin Salmon. He was on Azuri, uh, first game of top eight at um, Kraken Cards down. That's the one where he, uh, got, he got second at that, right? Yeah, he got second at that one. And then um, Jesse got first on that one, another team member. We kind of all hit top eight there. 
Yeah, and I just I should have ran meat axe into him. I should have gone for that mid range strategy into Azuri, but I really wanted to one shot him, and it just didn't work out. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very curious to see that because I I've also been on Uzuri. I've been trying to get her to work, and I am just it is not working for me. <laughs> like I don't know. it's hard. Yeah, I don't know what I'm it's doing hard. wrong, but it's not working for me. So, but I I don't have uh I don't have all the frailties I need either. So I think that's a huge part of it too. But yeah, Azuri really is matchup dependent too right now, right? Like you run into a Kano, your day's over. It's just what it is, right? I think Kano and Icelander just Azuri is off the table, right? So it kind of depends on if Gem's nice to you or not. Yeah, I mean that's 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 fair. That's fair. Yeah. Right. So, and then, yeah, actually shout out, shout out to Jesse as well for, uh, taking down that one on the two player Dory. set Dory. <laughs> yeah. Which, Quicksilver, yeah. So I saw his video, which was a really good, really well done video. And I was looking at, it, I'm like, nah, this isn't better. It's better than Kasai. And then like three days later, he's like, yep. Yeah, well, one I'm like, well, of course you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I unfortunately didn't get to play him. Uh, would have, I feel like I had a decent run into that one. But yeah, Dorian Kasai, he played a very fair deck. A lot of D-Reacts, a lot of three blocks, like kind of value Dorinthia, which is crazy, you know, because a lot of these heroes are just doing 25 damage. So it worked for it. It worked really well, right? Like he got it uh, and he, you know, he did well all the way through, I think. Yeah, and, and for those who haven't seen the video, I will link it as well. Uh, go give him some love on that. It's a, it's a gore belching setup. So the the trick he's got is he runs gore belching and then rouse the ancients, which has zero, so he can guarantee that because you do have to run another action, right? Otherwise, it'll yeah. bonk. So he so basically goes saber saber or sorry, not saber sword sword. Yeah, gore belching. It's pretty good. Yeah, zero for seven, right? That's not yep. bad. Not a bad number at all. Yep, that'll do. But then that's only one popper. So that is another question I had for you, is mm -hmm. out of what you've seen from your events or just around the world, uh, Prism was doing she was doing okay this season, actually. I've seen a lot of them. What'd you run yeah. into? Uh, I mean, Prism is Prism, right? So, like, Luminaris is not banned in Blitz, which means that they can kind of go both ways. They can do the aura build, or they can just swing Wartoon Heralds for seven, right? Mm -hmm. And nah, since there's no sideboards, the lists that don't naturally have sixes kind of like staring down the barrel of like one of the most aggressive decks in the game. So, uh, the, you know, I think Prism is good, but the problem is, is that, you know, she has some polarizing matchups, right? Uh, like Reinar is probably one of them. My deck pops everything. And you running non-blocks means that I just get lucky on Intimidate sometimes and just do 10, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think she has some polarizing matchups, right? Uh, but some really good ones too, right? Or Prism runs into Kano or Icelander, that's a free win, right? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I do have to say it reminded me I had, I had forgotten how busted Spectra is until I saw it on the tables this I'm so worried about the next set. <laughs> yeah. I'm so worried about it. Yeah, if they bring if they bring Spectra back in force, that's well, we we will we will we'll see. see two of the biggest boogeymen and women possibly coming back, right? Prism and Chain, right? Ugh, it's a lot of scary. Yep. All right, so moving kind of on to the next part here. So to to clarify to everyone, you'll be watching this on Monday, and you, we may have the weekend results at this point, but. We are going off the week two numbers, right? Icelander obviously is roughly 30% win rate of the events, by the way. That's what I mean by she's run roughly 30% of the events. Oldham is at about 9%, which keeps him on pace to go out. But that's that's a pretty big gap. Um, mm -hmm. But what I think is really interesting, or what I should say what surprised me, is Reinar not being kind of in that range as well. So what do you think, what, like what happened? What, what happened to Reinar this season? Uh, Reinar is always a weird character, right? Like, because it's so easy to get greedy, especially in Blitz. Like I said, one of my losses was because I just went greedy. Um, like, Reinar, of course, can one shot you, it can two shot you, but it actually does have some pretty polarizing matchups as well. Like, most of the warriors are hard to deal with, Chain is really hard to deal with. And then, if you don't really one shot Icelander, uh, she just has so much intrinsic value baked into her kit that, like, once you fall behind, it's pretty hard to come back. You know, like you're really mm -hmm. looking to one shot Icelander. So those polarizing matchups are really the problem, in my opinion. Right? Um, Chain Warrior and 
I don't really think Icelander's that hard, but I mean, obviously, she's if she finds Channel Lake frigid, you're kind of stuck for a while. So mm. that's why I made the Meat Axe list was specifically to beat Chain and, and Warrior because before it was those were basically auto losses, right? You just your one shot didn't one shot them. They have like fifty or what? What, what do they have like? 12 extra health, 15 extra health. Oh, chain. So you, yeah, chain yeah, he and, start, and the starts Warriors. At, he yeah, starts you, at 32. The Warriors start. Yeah, you just Warriors can't one-shot him. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but then Dynamos. So yeah, seven, and then they block plus. more and yeah. more. Yeah. So Kasai just does way too much damage and can survive the combo, and then Chain basically walks away from a combo unscratched. So you really had to find a way to get through their armor and then kill them. And that, that was really the hard part with standard claw Reinar was you know your blood rush just wouldn't do it i see yeah yeah well i mean i i've been running kasai and i i don't really have problems with Reinar, but the meat yeah. Reinar i actually do so it's interesting yeah. you say that yeah yeah that was the whole idea it's like you do your big wombo turn you do it as early as you can you eat their armor and then you just block nine swing five block nine swing five and you know, you kind of deny them their resources, their copper tokens, their their value, and and you kind of just force them to block. And once they're forced to block, you can close with like an alpha or barraging, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually, I was just doing the math for those who are keeping track. It's actually not seven; it's nine. Sorry, I forgot the second blocks on both the the handpiece yeah. and the chest piece. So sorry about that. That is nine. So yes, it's nine. Two from the headpiece, three from each. And then uh, one from one plus X from Bambrace. Yeah, one, from Dynamo. However many values she gets. Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, that's the main problem. But but the lists I've seen winning, right? Because um, a couple of the Reinars that won, you know, they gave me their list because they come and talk to me about it. And most of those were either like value club or value meat X lists, mm-hmm. right? So my initial list I posted was super aggressive for one shotting. And then I posted a second list that's much more, everything blocks three. And that list is actually winning. Um, mm. Same thing with the club list. Like you, I think the value Reinar is there. I think I think if people just played more patiently, they'd have more wins with him. But Icelander going away is going to help that a lot. You know. Sure. How does uh, Reinar handle dash in in Blitz? It's the same, uh, same kind of thing. Like you are looking for your power turn. You try and one shot them. Um, or if you're running the more value list, you can actually probably fatigue it. Uh, you can probably fatigue dash. Like, blocking nine and then swinging five is like, you know, that's only four turns of you swinging meat axe before they have to start blocking. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty good. And that's assuming that's all you did. You know, if you swing, one, if you add one barraging in there, they're probably blocking with two cards. And then the more times you get them to block with two cards, right, every boost is a whole card. So mm-hmm. every time they block with a card, they're losing that many boosts which is pretty fast. Right. Yeah. And you you have, what, five armor? Is that right? Six armor? Yeah, we, we really only have, yeah, two, three, four armor. Yeah, you don't okay. really run scab skins anymore, to be honest. Oh, I got you. Well, yeah, you're running beaten trackers. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. You're just kind of going for that one massive turn and then value. Got it. So five if you sit down with the crown. Okay, got it. Yeah. Reiner has some of the worst armor in the game, which is kind of crazy to think about. As a mid-range hero, he kind of fell behind everybody else on armor. Hmm. Yeah. It's one thing I wish they would fix. Like, he needs better armor. <laughs> he does. He's a, he's a brute. Cheetah skin doesn't give you much, uh, much yeah. protection. Right? Yeah. When you got rune blades and everybody else running around with twice your armor block, you're like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Give me some block, please. Yeah, fair enough. All right, well, what else do you see this season that, or, you know, you said you only played in two, so if you're if you're done with Blitz and you want to move on to Pro, Pro Tour discussion, that that's fair too, but anything else cool you saw this week or these last few weeks? Um, I mean, the the, the, the the abundance of, like, Reinars in our local meadow that have come out of the woodwork is really fun to see, right? Like, the heroes are starting to pick up some popularity in the Pacific Northwest. Um. You know, old him being old him, I think I think old him and Icelander falling out of the format is going to do a lot of good. But I think I was surprised at the lack of Ranger, to be honest. Mm. Um, I just can't imagine that Lexi is not good in this format. I just can't imagine it. Like at 20 health, when your arrows are like one for sevens, seems like there should have been way more Lexis. Or even like a, 
you know, Azalea can do 21 damage on a single arrow dominated. Mm-hmm. Like, where were where were all the Azaleas and Lexis? Was my real question. And why aren't they putting up massive numbers? Is it just they're too too fragile? I don't know. I think that's a really interesting question. Yeah, we didn't see at the at the Gongai one. We only saw, we saw one Azalea, I believe. Yeah, it was one Azalea, and we did not see a Lexi. That might. Yeah, I think I only saw like two Rangers at both events. I think a lot of them went to Riptide because we did see a fair number of Riptides. Mm. And I'm I mean I you know I've got my own opinions about him, but yeah. that have you? I'm sure you've played against that Ice Lexi list that just like throws seven Dominate Ice. List seven ices at you it's like shiver i've seen two versions of it there's a shiver and there's a death dealer version but the death it's not a snapshot death dealer but yeah that list is disgusting i don't know why people don't play that either right like that many on hits every turn the shock charmers one right like, right where if it hits it's just going to do give you five frostbites for no reason yeah yeah that's what i'm saying i don't know why rangers didn't win uh in blitz it's like it should be their format they do 20 damage a turn why aren't they you know, why aren't they putting up big numbers? It's kind of weird. Well, doesn't, I I mean, I'll be honest, I wasn't entirely sure how, like in that Chicago brawl they did or whatever, where Azalea won and knocked out Michael Hamilton. I wasn't exactly sure how Azalea did beat Icelander, though. But I'll Death admit dealer. I haven't run that back as much. Yeah, it's, it's mostly Death Dealer. She has so much card advantage. Like... Just the amount of arrows that draw you a card or refill your arsenal, and then Death Dealer is basically card positive. So even if you have a Frostbite or two, you can still go super tall. And Icelander's only weakness before was going tall, and that's just what Lexi or what Azalea does. Mm -hmm. So, and then Inertia, right? Inertia tokens are bad for Icelander. Bad, right? Her whole hero turns off with a single token, and there's nothing she can do about it. So Codex of Inertia going in there, Inertia, Arrows, like all of those really kind of punish her hero ability really hard. And I think that's why they were printed, you know? I think they were trying to punish Old Him and Icelander a little bit to slow their progressive, you know, their living legend points down quite a bit. Mm. A silver bullets never hurt anybody, right? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and then Old Him still is number one list, so <laughs> whatever. Yeah. You can get every card in his kit band, he'll still be good. Well, he's, I mean, he's, it's no secret that he's mathematically, maybe not busted, because yeah. I don't want to get too many dislikes, but he's mathematically very favored, right? Just for Mass- what he does. Yeah. So Massive card pool, right. good guardian cards, blues that do stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you fly out in a couple days. Yeah. Right? It's probably getting in Wednesday or Thursday, or you don't have mm-hmm. to say if you know what you know, but, um, What's your, I mean, obviously you're on Reinar, no question there. So what do yeah. you, your, you kind of already spoiled, spoiled the beans with Oldham chatting about that. So yeah, what do you see the things as this weekend? Do you think people are going to be jockeying for position? Any special spice? Um, I mean, I, so I put a whole video on like the win rates and the, all of that kind of stuff on my channel recently, like where I analyzed all of the 1K, 5K, 3Ks and the Battle Hardened. I mean, I think the meta is going to be pretty similar to that, right? You're going to have a lot of, High performing old him lists. You're gonna have a lot of Dromai's because Dromai's pretty good in this meta right now. Mm-hmm. And she was already probably the number one played deck before that. You're gonna have a lot of Rangers. Um, you know, typically the flavor of the month aggro deck is really high represented at most of these events. And right now I think that's Lexi. Even though Lexi's conversion rate is pretty okay, if not bad, compared to the other heroes. People just love their aggro decks. So I think Lexi will show up in numbers. And then, you know, Azalea is going to be there for sure, right? We've seen that she's constantly top aiding. She's winning events. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's really where the top of the meta is going to be. And then the middle is going to be a couple of fringe decks like Katsu and Briar and Kano and Icelander and stuff like that, you know. But it seems to be you want to be a Ranger or a Guardian right now. So do you think... I mean, Fi's obviously been non-suspiciously absent. Everybody knows why yeah. for the most part. Yeah. But if if Azalea isn't showing up, then Fi could do okay. Although probably Katsu's just better, I guess. I think Katsu's a better Fi yeah. now. I mean, I don't know. My opinion is kind of like they went a little aggressive with aggro this format. Um, people had issues with Fi in the last you know the last season but we have katsu who's just kind of a better version of fi and katsu's not performing Mm -hmm. and the reason katsu's not performing is because rangers are just that much better um it's crazy right they have on hits they do the similar amount of damage 
They don't really have a wind up period like Katsu does. So, yeah, Katsu's really good, but he's just getting outshined by on hit decks right now. I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, that was another one actually, Jeremai. I was. I still don't understand how Rangers get through Jeremai. Um, yeah. By large. The the most recent Jeremai list that won was the like super defensive one. Which I think is the list to me that makes the most sense, right? You just live through the arrows, get to your second cycle, kind of overwhelm the board state, and then go over. But, um, you know, Azalea just can go super tall. So it doesn't matter how many D reacts you have, she can A, turn them off with some of her cards, and B, you know, you can't really stop 19 with two D reacts. You know what I mean? Um, and then Lexi's just, right? super fast and i think codex is really the big problem because even with like you know a lot of my old him friends and and my testing with reinar like i'm on all three blocks and it's working out it's working out we get them low and then they just kind of flip the tempo with a single codex mm -hmm. so Dromai has to deal with a lot more pressure than you know versus lexi than i think that they really want to go through right they they probably would rather be a little slower so they can build a better board state but i mean dromai is supposedly favored right so they're just not converting well and i think it's because dromai is super hard to play i would put her up there as like the hardest if not like second hardest deck to play in the game hmm. yeah and she's taxing right like you're typically going to 50 minutes you have right. to do that 14 times over two days you can't make mistakes in each one of those games you can't really take breaks so she's just hard yeah yeah but people people love their dragons and they spend a lot of money on those dragons so oh man yeah illusionists love their cards right yes, yes they do yeah right cool well what else are you looking to what else are you looking forward to for pro tour i'm mean, excited to see everybody right all my reinar players we're all gonna meet up um that we call it the united brute brain cell so we're gonna we're gonna get some drinks probably i'm looking forward to seeing all the people you know uh this is the first time i'm going to an event after i've created like a channel so i'm hoping to get some networking in and meet people and do that kind of stuff i mean i'm just mostly hoping to get to day two on reinar mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest i want to be like i want to make it pretty far on on a bad hero just because i like to do that right I, i'm a, a masochist i guess like it's going to be painful, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> but I don't know how to draft, so that might be my downfall. <laughs> and that's that's all day two? Uh, it's uh, I think it's 50-50 both days. You okay. draft, and then you CC, then you draft, and then you CC. Okay. Oh, so you, you start out on Saturday drafting? Yeah, so we'll oh. see how that goes. Okay. <laughs> I'll know real quick if I'm going to be dropping day one <laughs> very fast. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you never know. Stick with it. Other people might yeah. drop. So. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best. You get a bajillion points, right? A bajillion competitive points. The better yeah. you do. So Yeah. I'm hoping uh I'm hoping to get my bajillion points and then uh you know, crack my top fifty again. I fell down out of the top fifty recently. I need to go back up. So that's my goal. Really just to hold on to my rank is all I'm really hoping to achieve tomorrow or on Thursday, Friday. Well, you know the key to that, right? Is you really need to quit your job <laughs> yeah. and fly around the world playing flesh and blood. I mean, yes, right. That's, <laughs> <laughs> if I had, if I was able to do that, I I hope I would be top fifty player. But I have a full time job. Now I'm making videos, so it's a uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. All right. Well, I'll I'll let's go ahead and go off topic or off script. Okay. But you mentioned you mentioned frailty, and uh, mm. so I was, I've been playing a lot of assassin and ranger screwing around with it and that card's pretty good it's busted dude I don't, there's no other way around it that card's broken yeah i'm trying to beat around the bush here but like here's here's i guess my my takeaway on it is like i don't know that you can successfully play someone like assassin without it right now sure. so doesn't that actually make the card a problem right like I, I mean, I think uh, several things should have happened, right? Like, I mean, I think it could be an assassin-only card. The card is crazy in assassin, but assassin isn't, like, overwhelming your hand every turn, right? It's kind of like a conscious decision if you want to block assassin. 
you don't have to. They're not presenting 20 plus damage a turn. Mm -hmm. So I I mean like it could have been fine an assassin um, if it was an assassin only card. And then even if they made it like a legendary, you can only have one of each in your deck or whatever, that would have helped a lot. But that card is so above rate. And it's above rate in like the wrong ways. It's it's not just like the it's a better recursion the, the frailty one's a better recursion card than Chain and Levia have access to. So the recursion heroes have take longer to recur like recur their cards mm-hmm. than Ranger does now. But it also eliminates like all of the mid-range decks. Like I think I have a big problem with it as a Reinar player because when they play that, I just lose a, a block target, right? And then I think the inertia one is way worse than the frailty one. Like the inertia one is my I whenever that card comes up, I get mad because putting the top card of my deck into my arsenal, there's certain heroes where that just breaks their turn. You know, if I put a blue wrecker romp in my arsenal, I can't block and I lose it. So it's, you know, they can swing 12, 15, whatever, and then make me do nothing and lose a card. So it's kind of crazy. Those mm-hmm. cards are pretty above rate. Yeah. But yeah, to your point, like, if that's the only thing keeping Assassin viable, maybe that card is kind of an issue, right? Right. Well, or, or it works to the inverse, which is like Assassin never gets like better because that card exists. And like, well, we, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? And then eventually mm-hmm. somewhere down the line, the card gets banned and then... Assassin's just like out on a raft in the middle of the lake, or I, I don't know, right? But yeah, yeah. Assassin's I mean, weird, right? They yeah, have, yeah, they have weird cards. They have they have more cards than a lot of other heroes, but because they're so clearly divided into stealth and and contract, that it's kind of awkward for them. And then you know they also are the only class without any arcane barrier equipment. They they're the only class with a lot of stuff, but they're competitive right now. And I think it's because of that card, right? Mm-hmm. And Shakedown's pretty good, but, you know, nothing like looping a CNC forever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, the, the disgusting one, right, is Frailty with Leave No Witnesses. I mean, that's just, yeah. a, just, that's just a gross, like, late game play, right? Yeah, for free, right? Yeah. yeah. Codex, give me your card, and uh, now it's gone. And a, pon- <laughs> and a Ponder token. Yeah. Ponder, too, right? Cool idea. Very interesting delayed gratification. Really good concept kind of crazy strong on right. certain cards right ponder run is crazy codex if codexes didn't have ponder too that's another reason it's broke that actually might be even like the worst part of it it's like they spend their entire hand to do this crazy combo and then they have no punishment whatsoever because they just refill their arsenal mm-hmm. yeah yeah and it's well i mean so i've heard it equated to and i, I didn't play this game so correct me if you have but pot of greed um is one oh, i've no. heard it equated to many a time um and it's not exactly the same because you get the card on a different turn but only slightly different right so yeah my buddy justin compares it to um oh no the ice card that pay you know pay or discard card oh um arctic yeah, incarceration uh, right no, no. The, yeah i can't remember but yeah. the ice card right he, he equates it to the red version of that ice card only it's yellow and you get the draw card like because you're you're forcing your opponent to get rid of an entire card most most of the time. They can't defend with it. Then you do your whole turn, and then you draw a card. It's it's just above rate. I don't know. There's not really any other way to put it out there. It's just an above rate card. And I think the old heroes are taking more advantage of it than the new ones. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a trend that we've seen a lot in Flesh and Blood, right? Like the old cards tend, the old heroes and old cards tend to break stuff, you know. Lexi's go again and Azalea's dominate are just much stronger than Riptide, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, one thing I have been noticing, and this is granted on the more casual level, but fatigue decks are like all the rage right now. I'm sure you've noticed this as well. And mm-hmm. is that just a byproduct of kind of that being assassin's thing for the most part right now and everyone kind of gravitating to that or what's what's your take on that um i mean i don't know exactly i think it's because there's no other way to deal with ranger i think that's kind of the byproduct i think fatigue old him is really here because it's like the only way they could figure out to deal with ranger and even then you know like i'm friends with some really high level old him players and they're like yeah this is tight like it's not favored you know and 
Assassin just leans itself to being fatigue by itself, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of the core concept of that class. And they have, you know, nine plus copies of C and C. So you're kind of seeing this weird meta form where it's like Ranger versus decks that can beat Ranger. And right now the decks that beat Ranger kind of are fatigue, you know? Um, and then like a random dash sprinkled in sometimes, but I don't really understand exactly how the dashes are doing it. But each one of these tournaments is Ranger, Old Him, Bravo, or, you know, Azuri, and then like a dash. It's, yeah, kind of all the same format, you know? Yeah, I, I actually lost to a dash last night. Uh, shout out to Adam Hill. He was playing a fatigue dash. I mean, not really fatigue, but like just three mm -hmm. pistol whips a turn and... He had nothing but, like, I think all of his boost cards were blue. And yeah. it was, like, raging onslaughts and all mm -hmm. that. You know, it was, it was not built to boost, right? It was only built to pew pew. Yeah, the tree frog dash is becoming kind of popular now. The whole, like, hyper turtle, pistol him down, like, um, you know, fatigue old him is obviously popular. Bravo's doing better, but that's just because most of his cards shut down Ranger, right? Like, can't buff cards, can't go again. Um, and then you have the two rangers who are kind of just like holding everybody else down a little bit, right? It's yeah. an interesting meta. It's a weird one. Yeah. I, I'm very excited for next weekend to see yeah. what boil bubbles up. I'm actually more interested to see what tops Saturday than I am what wins overall because I want I, think so too. I, I like to see like how the field works, you know, because I think that translates better to like the rest of us normies. But Yeah. And I mean, normally the winner got lucky somewhere, right? Like the top, you know, you look at the top 32, top 64, like that's probably the real meta, you know? It is a card game at the end of the day. Sometimes you just get unlucky. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I guess my point was like, you know, the, the folks who consistently make day two, you know, which will be 80% yeah. of the people who make two day two, yeah. the people who consistently yeah. make day two, right? Yeah. They're probably also trying to game each other right now. Mm -hmm. So... You know, that's why I like looking at kind of like the main field, not not the main field, because it's still a very select group of very smart people that made it there. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 I think it'll translate better to like callings and battle hardens and locals and stuff like that than yeah. necessarily like the top 16 will. Right. So, yeah, I'm excited to see the calling, too. Like there's a lot of data we're going to get. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I wonder, you know, we'll see if, you know, maybe somebody blows everybody's mind and we don't need to take action on these heroes at all and everything's fine and they found some secret cool deck right it's always cool when you see something that shouldn't have made it like just come out of the woodwork right and crush everybody else but um i'm really more interested to see like if somebody can solve ranger right if, if they can figure out how to beat that deck reliably that is going to be the best deck in the format right hmm. and then we might see that triangle form because right now i'm not really seeing that triangle that we normally see it's kind of like ranger and who beats it i'm not really seeing that third deck who's trying to come in at the other angle you know um, so I'd be interested if like somebody finds that third deck that kind of has really good game into guardian and kind of good game into ranger. And then we can see that full circle going, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And as you mentioned, yeah. it'll be, it, you know, what's, what's also going to be of note is what does, you know, like someone like a Michael Hamilton, what does he show up playing? Does he, does he move off Icelander and move on something else? Right. If he does, is he on all them? That will also shift. Quest. That will also shift the world. So, yeah, I, I want to. I, I have a feeling he'll be on old him, but I'm not sure. That'd be cool. Well, I have. I I don't. I was gonna say I have inside info, but I clearly I don't. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. All right. Cool. Well, I, that was all I had. What do you have? Anything? Bring up? No. I mean, chat? yeah. Just come say hi if you guys are gonna be a pro tour. I'm gonna be there. I'll have some some goodies, some Reinar goodies to give away. I'm thinking. However much room I have in my bag is how many I'm going to take. Um, was it like yeah. a bag of rocks or what? Pun, Dude, pun intended. Oh, I pun intended. I, I don't have my rock up here, but I did 3D print a rock dice cup uh, that I will be bringing with me. Um, but I have like play mats and I have some other stickers and stuff like that that I'm going to give away. Yeah. I think I saw a picture of that on the Twitters. Yeah, the Twitter machine. Yeah. Uh, the guy, the, the Reinar who beat me in the top eight. I gave him my uh, playmat because he took me down. So now he has uh, got the title of Alpha Ape in my Discord because <laughs> he beat me in an event. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking time Sunday evening before you fly out to 
chat with us. Um, yeah, one more time, let folks know where they can find you on the on the the webs, as it may be. Yeah, I'm so Savage Lands News, uh, uh, YouTube, Twitter, like all of the all of the social media machines. I'm on all of them. Uh, typically post Reinar content, but then I tend to do a lot of like meta analysis videos. That's mm -hmm. kind of like my favorite video to do. The player interviews, Reinar stuff, meta analysis videos. That's kind of what I've been up to recently. And uh, yeah, th thanks for having me on though. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's always a great chat. And for those of you who haven't checked his channel out, he puts out quite a bit of content and it's, <laughs> it's not just like spam content. It's like good stuff. So head over there, best. give him the like and subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, thank you. All right. Well, I think that'll do it. So you got to say it with me, boss. Go commando. Go commando. Let's do it. Ha <laughs> ha.